Hi guys and welcome back to the third part of Shine On You Crazy KiCad, which is an introductory look at KiCad, mostly for people that are used to using Raspberry Pi. So we built a small board that has two functions, one just to light up and then the other to actually light up when you tell it to. And we're going to use this as a, as a platform and a, as a launching pad for doing other things with the Raspberry Pi. So this is an introduction to KiCad. Uh, you've already done that, hopefully. You've already built the board. You've already ordered the parts. If not, there's two links down below that you can check out. Uh, but hopefully you've gotten the parts back now and you're ready to go. Uh, and one thing that you should do or should I probably should have mentioned sooner was the equipment. Um, so this is something that we talk about a lot on contextual electronics about you know what kind of equipment you should have in your lab, what you should be using when you're starting to build things up. Now this is especially important for people that have never done this stuff before. Uh, so let's take a quick look at what I use uh, when I'm building up my projects. So here is, uh, you know, here's my range of equipment over here. Uh, this is, so you see on the, on the left side there, is an AOUE 937 uh, soldering iron here, which I'm actually gonna turn on and turn up to, uh, this is in Celsius, just so you know. So I'm gonna turn this up to 350, just so we get this heated up. So this comes with this base unit, and, uh, and, and then also uh, a uh, base for the actual soldering iron itself comes with a couple different tips. And then I separately bought this uh, gold, uh, I don't even know what that is, I guess it's like, it's, it's basically like a Brillo pad, but this helps to clean off the tip of the iron as it heats up. You can either use this or it comes with a, a sponge that you can heat up, that's the common one. Uh, so that's definitely one thing. Another one is the uh, pick store. These are just off Amazon, real simple, but just having a good pair of sharp tweezers can be helpful for picking up parts, and that's definitely something we're gonna be doing here. Uh, and then, uh, well, Oh, I guess I don't have the soldering free. I will put a link down below, down below, uh, for solder as well because that's definitely something that you'll need to have. Now you could put, you could go and get like liquid rosin flux like this shows, but in reality, most solder that you get will have uh, a flux core. And like I said, I will link down below a uh, a, a bit of, uh, a, you know, a, a link to solder that actually has core, rosin in the core, so when you melt it, it actually, well, you'll see it here. Uh, I guess, oh, here's a different, here's an older one I have. This is actually not what I normally use, but this is another one here. So this has, so this is just a reel of solder. That's how you normally get it. You can get it much smaller ones. You see it says, Rel oh, you can't really see, Relia core, right? So that actually refers to it having a rosin core. All right, so let's take a look at what we actually have on the bench here. Uh, that's another important thing. <laughs> what we're actually looking at here. So this is the rest of my bench. Um, so you can see I got some parts. Uh, I got a, well, let's pull these out here. So first things first, I got a, uh, a reel of 200 ohm resistors like we, like we had talked about. And then I got some connectors. And then I got some LEDs. And really that's all we needed for this component. So these are 1206, these should be 1206 as well. Yep, looks like these are all 1206 components. So that's all good. Uh, these are 0.1 inch spaced headers and we'll show that in a second. Then let's also take a look at the board. So did get the board back here. Um, kind of hard to see. Let's take a look on the close up cam here. So this is what it looks like up close. Now you might have some tabs on here and these you could just kind of, if you just flex them back and forth, these are gonna be tweezers, but you could also use pliers. Uh, you could just flex it back and forth well, I should actually use pliers. Uh, where are my pliers? Well, I will do that in a bit, but you can basically flex this back and forth, and, and you see that there are like teeth marks here. Right? There's little cut holes, and that's actually what allows you to break these tabs off, and that's actually how it broke off the other side as well. And so um, this is what we got back from Oshpark. Now, what we also see is you can see the, uh, the, the gold-plated copper pads here, and that's where we're going to actually put our components. And then we have our plated through hole component or plated through hole J1 connector here. You see that actually does go through to the back side as well. So let's actually take a look. Let's open this. Let's open up our um, our set of connectors here. Let's see, make sure this all fits. So this is the connectors we had bought. So what we're going to do is actually use this on the bottom side here. There we go. It goes right in there. So it's obviously still loose. We do need to solder this in. But you see the, the pins come all the way through to the top side here. And what we'll do is we'll actually solder that flush so that this thing, this whole thing can plug right on to the Raspberry Pi. 
Similarly, we're going to, uh, well, this, for many of you, I'm sure this is going to be a first time uh, doing surface mount soldering here. So why don't we go ahead and try it out, right? So let's, we'll start with the resistors, nice and easy. So first things first, I'm going to go and pull off the plastic here. So I use these tweezers that I have. And like I said, there will be links for the tweezers down below. And you can either stick them in to the individual components and try and lift it up like that, or you can just try and grab the edge. Uh, you, see, you see that those went everywhere. So what I'll do now that I have the, this uh, pulled back here, let me go ahead and drop these out of here. You can see that they actually do write the component value on here. So 201 refers to 20 times 10 to the 1, right? So uh, if this is a 220 ohm, it would be 221, right? If this is a 2.2K resistor, 2200 ohm resistor, then it would be 222, right? So that's kind of the, the main thing we're going to, that's the, uh, that's kind of the, the way that they notate this stuff. All right, so let's get some solder going here. So I'm going to take a, a bit of solder that I have here. I'm going to go and melt off a strip of it. From here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and uh, hold down the board. I'm going to place the soldering iron on one pad. And I'm going to put, heat up the pad and then apply solder to the pad once it's heated up. You can see there's some smoke coming off there as well. Do the same thing here. There we go. Now what I'll do is I'll take my tweezers. I'm going to turn this sideways. Really, it's all about kind of manipulating board so it's easy for you. And grab the part here. Grab the sides of the part. Don't squeeze too hard or else you will fling that off into oblivion. I'm going to heat that back up. Place the part down. You'll be able to see the part of the solder cool off now. See as it cools, it hardens. And now if I try and pull this off of here, I actually can't do that. I'm going to do the same thing here. Now with resistors, you don't actually have to care about which way it goes on. So you can, so you see we put that on that way, we can flip this one around, no problem. Resistors actually do not matter in which direction they apl or you apply them to the board. I do have to apologize, doing this underneath the camera is always kind of tough for me. Oops, see I pulled that one off too soon there. this again. Heat up the pad first. Hold it in place. Wait for it to cool. And now it's nice and solid. So now what I can do is go and put the soldering iron on the other side. And these are hand soldering pads. I'm going to clean off the tip of the iron real quick. So I'm going to, uh, so they're hand soldering pads, so they're a little bit wider, right? So what I'll do is apply to the pad, heat that up, and then apply solder to both the pad and the iron. See, it kind of like just wicks up onto the edge of the part, part there. You could even put the soldering iron to the pad and the part, and then apply again to the pad. Really, what the idea is, you want to apply heat before you uh, before you put the solder down. Pull the part off, or sorry, pull the soldering iron off, and you can see they're cooling down. All right, so how's that look? Looks like a pretty solid solder joint right there. You see, there's a little bit of you see the uh, the shiny part around it, well, shiny part around the shiny part, the liquid looking part, that actually is the flux that I mentioned, right? So that's the flux that's in the middle of the, that's in the middle of the solder right here. You know, can't really see it, but it's in the middle of the solder. So as I melt the solder, which is tin and lead in this case, then also there's a liquid, there's a, a, a core, a solid core that then also melts, and it's got that, that uh, agent in there that helps kind of to flow the solder where, uh, where the metal is. So that's kind of the idea. All right, so we've got our resistor on there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go and put on the diode. Now the first thing we need to do though is figure out which way the diode should go. So let's go take a look over at the uh, schematic diagram just to verify. Actually, we'll look, at, we'll look at the layout just to make sure which way we want this to be going. So we're back here over on the desktop. We've got our project directory here. I got the project open that we had created previously. So you can just take a look at the board like we had there. 
And what we see is that the uh, silk screen shows that the cathode, which is that, that line on the bottom side, is pointing down. So what we want to do is find the cathode on the parts that we're showing. And then once we do that, we'll put those facing down. right? So basically what we're doing is we're saying the Raspberry Pi is going to power the, the anode side of the LED. We're going to put the cathode on the resistor side here right, for both these parts. And then that will go down through the ground, which is back to pin 9. So uh, really it's all about just kind of figuring out the orientation of the parts that we have on, uh, on our actual design here. So let's take a look back over here. So we've got our, our part here. Let's go and open up the, uh, the LED packaging, which might be a little bit more intricate. I'll go back to the, so this is our LED packaging. So this is actually usually in, uh, depends on the part, but usually this is in some kind of moisture sealed container. If you follow the, the parts that we got from DigiKey, if you got the same parts, then uh, you'll probably have something like this. This is basically to prevent uh, having too much moisture in the components because what normally happens is when you apply a lot of heat to them to solder them to the board, uh, if there's a lot of, if there's moisture in there, and you see this actually shows the, uh, the amount, this is just a test of showing there's not too much moisture in there. But if there was moisture in there, uh, you can imagine w having water inside a component and then heating it up quite quickly, it could uh, basically release steam and pop the part open. And that's kind of the thing we're trying to avoid here. So same thing here, we're going to try and open up these components. Go back to our microscope. So you see these components are in what's called uh, tape and reel. And so what we're going to do is open up these components here. Move this out of the way for a second. Try and grab the edge. Nice, got the edges there. Let's get two of these out of here. All right, so let's take a close up look here. So usually any marking that you have on an LED is going to be the cathode side, which in this case, this is a part that I have not used before, but I am assuming that the green line that you see here is the cathode side. So what we're going to do is put the green line on the bottom here. So let's, uh, let's take a look. Well, let's just go and create, uh, do the same thing as we did before. Put some solder on the top pad. Heat up the pad. Apply some solder, heat up the pad, apply some solder. And what you'll find over time is that as you get better at this, you'll get a little bit faster. So like I said, we're going to keep this green, green line as the cathode side. Almost always you're notating the, the cathode side. See the solder start to flow there onto the component. Okay, wait for that to cool. Do the same thing on the other part. Now, if you did get a part that's different from the part that we showed here, that's fine. Just uh, go look at the data sheet, figure out which marking. This, like I said, this is an assumption that we made, uh, but go and figure out which which marking makes the most sense for your component there. And definitely, like I said, the, the cathode should be on the resistor side here. I'm going to apply heat. Put a little solder under there. You can see it kind of flowing underneath as well. And this is a view that most people usually don't get right at the beginning because, um, well, I didn't, you know, you see right there, I didn't actually have heat on the pad. But I didn't actually get, oh, that's a bad idea. That was bad. Uh, I didn't get a, a microscope until much later on, so it is. They're definitely a lot cheaper than they used to be, and they can be helpful for this kind of thing. Let me go and reflow this side as well. Really, just to clean up the joint. Well, that's not super clean. But the main thing you should be taking away from this is apply the soldering iron to the joint first, and then put some solder in there. Okay, so we've got both these things attached. You see there is some, uh, some flux there, kind of dirtying things up, but that's okay. All right, so now what I'm going to do is go and put a, uh, a part on the back side. And now, again, this is another type of part that doesn't really matter in terms of the orientation. In fact, let's uh, take a look at how I'm doing this. So I'm just going to take this, 
you put the solder or put put the part in the back here. Like that. I'm not sure how well that's coming through there. Put this back down here. What I'm going to do is kind of put it on an angle so that it's, uh, so it kind of holds its place here. It's a little bit out of, out of focus, but it's relatively uh, straight. And then what we do is go and up, again apply heat to just one of the pads. So I'm kind of holding it down with one finger. Apply heat to one of the pads. Heat that up. You see it kind of melting in there now. Now why only one, oh jeez. Great job, Chris. Uh, so why only one pad? Why, why, not, why not more pads at once? Um, that's because then you can go and adjust it as needed. So basically, I, I took the heat off there too soon. OK, there we go. So now, let's see if I can adjust this so you can see a little bit better. All right, so here we go. So I've got this part in here now. You can see the one solder joint is done. And the, the reason, like I said, you want to just do one at a time is if, if this was a little bit out of sorts, you could go and re-solder this joint and push it in so it is nice and flush. But this does look pretty flush. I guess I can just finish soldering it like this. I'm just gonna, uh, you know, you can get other, other things in here like uh, uh, tools like a pan of ice are really good for, for work, holding work. Or if you have a, something that's called a third hand, you can get that as well. Uh, but all these things kind of help you solder a little bit better. I'm just going to go and touch... Like I said, apply heat to the pin, and then apply solder, watch it to flow. This will cut down on your uh, your blobby, blobby solder, basically. Also, don't use too much solder. That's another thing that's, that's very important for beginners. I guess so assume that you are a beginner. If you're not, well, it's nice of you to be watching this, but it's probably not necessary. With through hole components, you can also watch the solder kind of flow down into the holes, so that kind of helps. All right, let's take a look at that, see how that looks up close and personal. Well, let's take a look at it here. That looks pretty good, I think. Those solder joints kind of look like they should be flowing down and away from the pin. That's good. So this is all of the, uh, this is what we really needed to be doing here. So, um, and like I said, there's, uh, you know, so we had three copies. Uh, so with Oshpark, at least, you get three copies of the board. So I can go and assemble the other boards and uh, we can check that out. So this has been a relatively simple assembly. Uh, the, you know, the China and Eucrasia Kaigat itself is not a very complicated board, but I do understand the fear that comes from, you know, if this is your first surface mount uh, component based project, it usually is pretty scary at the beginning. Hopefully I showed it's not that hard to do. Hopefully I showed that you can do it. And hopefully I showed the uh, equipment that you need in order to get that all done. If you have any questions, you can go and uh, ask over on the Contextual Electronics forums. Uh, we have a great community over there of people that are you know, answering questions, asking questions, uh, you know, posting about the progress. We'd love for you to do the same over there. Uh, in the next video, what we're going to do is try and actually blink that light. Uh, that is actually my weakest piece, which is the programming aspect, but hopefully uh, it's simple enough we can get started with that. So what we'll do is we'll go and plug that onto a Raspberry Pi. We'll go and start up a uh, you know, Raspberry and, and actually access GPIO2, which is the only thing that really matters. There. We'll also be able to see it light up based on uh, hooking it into the correct, the correct pins because uh, the power LED is there in order just to show that it's gotten power. So if you have any questions, go ask over in the forum. Thanks for watching.